All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, this week. Hope everybody has a, a great week. Get a chance to spend a little time with your families. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for this team and uh, the season that we've had to this point. Uh, really had an excellent season. These guys have worked incredibly hard. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of sacrifice and commitment and dedication and work that goes in uh, to having a season like this. And just really uh, thankful for our staff and our team and, and uh, you know everyone here at Clemson. Um, but uh, we, we it, there is the season, uh, and then we have South Carolina. It kind of stands alone. That's why it's a it's a goal listed all by itself on our goal board. Uh, it's just, this is a fun week. It's it's awesome to be a part of uh, rivalry games. Uh, you know, regardless of, of where you are, it's just uh, whether you're at Florida, Florida State, Alabama, Auburn, Clemson, South Carolina, Michigan, Ohio State, whatever. Uh, this is a special week. And uh, because it, it means a lot to a lot of people, this is one that you that you live with all year. And uh, so, you know, we're looking forward to competing against these guys. Uh, it's the next goal for us. Uh, we're really happy that we were able to achieve our second goal, which is to win the division. And uh, this is the next goal. And uh, we're, we're uh, we know we got a good team coming in here. Um, Will's done an excellent job. Uh, really has. I mean, they, they're very well coached. Their staff has done a great job. And uh, you know, building some positive momentum, uh, and and uh, coming back from a, a, obviously a disappointing season for them last year, uh, to to come back and have them bowl eligible. They're playing a lot of young guys. Uh, they they've done a heck of a job. They really have. Offensively, uh, since Bentley took over, they're four and one, and uh, he is uh, obviously uh, well groomed uh, to 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 be a very successful college quarterback. Uh, you know, with, with his dad, has coached him forever, and uh, he's one of the best coaches we've had in the state. So uh, he's very well prepared. He's, he's a freshman, but he's not your typical freshman. He is very knowledgeable, uh, has a great uh, understanding of, of what they're doing offensively. And again, it's just kind of settled them down, and uh, they've played very well since he took over. Uh, they've done a great job in the running game. Uh, their backs, uh, you know, the Dowdle uh, kid, big, strong. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a young player, but, but he really has kind of the whole package for them. Uh, 25, Turner's, he's not quite as big, but he's fast uh, and, and, and got some dynamic, uh, you know, ability to him. Uh, you know, but again, it starts up front with their offensive line, and and I think they're I think they're good up front. I think Bailey, 78, is as good a lot offensive lineman as we've seen. Uh, he he's he is a great football player. Uh, he he's as good as I've seen all year on tape. Uh, big, strong, physical uh, presence inside, and again, I think they're doing a good job of of uh, schematically with what they're doing in the run game. And, uh, and the play action and the screen game mixed in. So, uh, and then taking their shots uh, when, when they present themselves. But, you know, very impressed with them. They got a very good tight end, two good tight ends. You know, they got the, the 81 kid. He's a big guy. He's 6'5", 240, 250, uh, runs really well. He's got a lot of energy. I think he's an older, more mature kid. Uh, and he, you can tell that he really brings a lot of energy to their team. Uh, Crosby is, is another guy. He's got about four touchdowns. So they do a good job mixing their tight ends uh, in. And then uh, number one is a, is a great player. Uh, 89 is going to be a great player. He's, he's had a heck of a year for them as a freshman. Uh, no, no Brian very well. Big, strong, one-on-one uh, -on -one type of a target uh, that they'll do a good job of taking some one-on-one -on -one shots and back shoulder type throws. And, and uh, he does a good job of high pointing those type of balls, those 50-50 plays. He's, he's, he's uh, really gotten better and better as the year has gone. So uh, they've done a nice job of pulling it together. And again, I think Bentley has, has really, uh, uh, you know, kind of just brought it all, helped them kind of pull it all together and, and uh, uh, have the success that they've had. Defensively, uh, several guys that we've seen from, from last year, they do have some new guys mixed in, some junior college transfer guys. Uh, a couple young guys in there playing, but you know, that number 90 is a load inside. Uh, he is a very good player. They got a lot of depth up front. They play a lot of those guys. Uh, English, who we've played against the last few years, I think he's got about nine sacks. He's long. Uh, he's an athletic kid. He's, you know, Dante Sawyer. 
He's quick twitch, good athlete. They got a young guy, number 18, that comes in there and plays. He's a good athlete. Uh, number eight uh, is, is, a, is a guy. So they, they, got, they got plenty of guys up front. Uh, very impressed with their linebackers. 28 is a, is a really good football player. And uh, four, I believe, is, is the other kid that's a thumper. Uh, 11, the Holloman kid, has played quite a bit. He plays kind of all three spots. Uh, very good group at linebacker. And then uh, secondary, uh, they got a new kid at corner who's, I think, a, a very good player. He's fast. Uh, they're doing a nice job with, at, at, with their two safeties, uh, 16, and, and uh, is playing very good, solid uh, uh, corner for them. And then uh, 22 and 24 uh, back there at safety. But the, the biggest thing defensively, you know, obviously Will has always, his background's always been defense. Uh, they're very well coached, they understand what they're doing, and they've done a nice job of, of you know, positioning their guys uh, to have a chance to be successful. Uh, and uh, from a coverage standpoint, you know they're they're not just a, a one trick pony. Uh, they're going they're going to present multiple things. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna you know give you some one safety. They're going to play some two and some Tampa. They're going to cloud. Uh, they're going to trigger those corners uh, to support in the run game. They'll do a lot of different things uh, to to kind of keep you off balance a little bit and play a little bit of four man and three man fronts as well. So uh, very well coached. And uh, again, we know that. Uh, we're going to have to play well. And then they're good in the special teams. You know, Fry's been around there for 10 years, it seems like. Uh, he's, he's still there, a uh, good kicker, strong leg, and uh, they, they've got uh, good returners. So uh, for us, it's, it's really our focus is, is on just trying to finish strong and trying to play the best four quarters of the season this week. That's, that's really what we're locked in on and focused on. Um, and then we're excited to have another opportunity to play at home. You know, obviously we didn't uh, play, uh, you know, didn't get the result that we wanted the last time uh, that we played here. So we're really excited about having another opportunity. I'm, I'm thankful that our seniors get another chance to, to play here at home. Uh, but this will be it. This will be their last opportunity. And uh, it's a night game. So I know it'll be a great, uh, great crowd. Everybody have a chance to digest all that turkey uh, that everybody's going to eat on Thursday and get excited about coming in uh, and uh, having a great environment to play a college football game in Saturday night. Coach, you uh, went head to head with Coach Spurrier so many times. Does it feel different or, or strange uh, going into this one now that he's gone? Well, more so last year. Uh, not really as much this year, um, just because you know it's been a little more time. Last year was was very different, um, and um, so you know I've known Will a long time. Uh, he, we 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 uh, he was a young coach at Auburn when I was at, at, at Alabama, and then he was at LSU. We kind of cross paths over the years um, and uh, always like Will. I've always thought he, he's, he's, he's a tremendous football coach. When you go back a few years to Deshaun tearing his ACL, having it basically be a secret that he was going to play <clears> that game here two years ago, where does that rank on the list of Watson moments for you? Uh, right there at the top. I mean, I, mean, I, I just I literally, I mean, I – that's how I started my press conference after the game. I was like, you guys don't understand what we just saw. Uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, I, I just was really blown away the entire game uh, and, and how he played and competed and performed. Um, I mean, it was, it was spectacular. I mean, and just to, you know, definitely, I mean, he's had some unbelievable moments. I mean, he's, that guy, it just becomes, you know, everybody's expectations of him are so high, you know. It's like Michael Jordan, you know, he shows up, he's supposed to drop 45 on you, you know. All of a sudden he, he shoots, he gets 20. It's like, what's, what's wrong with Michael Jordan? You know, he's, he's kind of elevated himself um, here at Clemson in college football uh, his, the, because he's had so many unbelievable moments, so many great plays. Um, but that one right there was, was certainly special. And plus, you know, we hadn't beaten those guys. Um, you know, we, we, We've done a lot of great things around here and a lot of great success, but that was uh, obviously a bad run for us in, in achieving that goal. We hadn't done a great job with that goal, and uh, he was a freshman, and, and you know that was that was a great moment, and um, you know got us back on track in this series. As he prepares to move on to the NFL, whenever that is, how much what has he learned about himself because of that scrutiny, those expectations, like the Jordan thing you talked about that he's held the 
that high standard? Yeah, well, I think he's better suited to answer that than I am. But, but I just think that, you know, he's just, he's just learned what matters, what doesn't matter, uh, what to focus on, what not to focus on. Um, you know, you can learn a lot through success, but you certainly can learn probably a lot more through some failure. Uh, so he's had enough of that along the way to, to again, to continue to grow. Um, but he's just – he's well prepared. Obviously, the platform that he's had here at Clemson, the type of success that we've had has exposed him to uh, a very high level of scrutiny, uh, exposure, all that. And so I think he's, he's learned how to balance – you know, and, and stay true to who he is and not get distracted by things. And that'll be very important for him as he continues his career. Did you guys learn anything about this rivalry last year when you come in number one undefeated? They're a three win team going nowhere. And that game was a football game throughout the fourth quarter. Absolutely. It was in doubt. I mean, on paper, it says you guys should have blown away. Did you learn anything about this rivalry in that game? Yeah, well, that's why I always tell people we don't play the game on paper. Uh, you know, that's, that's what Coach Stallings used to always teach us. You know, if, if we played it on paper, the coaches would show up and walk to the midfield, you know, and we'd look at his X's and O's and his X's and O's, and the crowd would ooh and ah, and ref would declare a winner. Uh, you know, it, it, it would just, you know, or we'd just listen to the media or whoever and, and wouldn't need to play the game. Uh, you know, you just, you just get a, a winner declared. Now, that's – that's why you play them. Uh, game's not decided on, on paper. Yes, you can look at it and say, okay, well, this appears to be the best team. But as we all know, the best team does not always win. You know, you got to play well. It's the team that plays the best. Uh, that's what makes this game so exciting and so much fun. And then you throw in the fact that you have a rivalry game. Rivalry game. Um, anything can happen. And we all know that. I don't think we learned that last year. I think, I think, you know, everybody knows that. Uh, you get in games like this, uh, there's there's a lot that can happen. Anybody can beat anybody. We've seen it a million times uh, over the years. A few, years ago, Bradley, a few years ago when Deshaun Watson declared that when he got here, he would not lose to South Carolina while he was the starting quarterback, what went through your mind? Were you thinking, shh? Or... I, I didn't even know that. Uh, I, didn't, I learned that from y'all. Uh, so, you know. That's a good. That was a good goal for him. Uh, nothing wrong with having goals, and um, so far he's been able to live up to it. So hopefully he can. Hopefully he can uh, live that dream out. When you think back to uh, the, your victory over USC when you were an interim coach, what kind of stands out to you the most? Do you kind of consider that win maybe the last deciding factor that kind of got you this head job? Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, uh, you know, no, no doubt about it. I, I, I remember. Uh, uh, first of all, getting ready to go to the hotel, and and uh, uh, you know, President Edwards uh, was literally wheeled out on a hospital bed uh, to see the team off. It was unbelievable, and um, I remember um, it was a kind of a cold, kind of cloudy, seemed later than it was type of a game. Um, but I just remember the spirit of our team and how hard they played. Um, their will to win, um, and uh, the crowd, you know, at the end of the game. Uh, it was a special moment for me, and there's no question. I mean, you know, we don't win that game, I'm probably not here. I mean, maybe. Uh, I mean, Terry Don Phillips has some guts, uh, but I don't know if he had had that, them kind of guts. Uh, <laughs> but, I, you know, that's it was, it was unbelievable, you know, and, and uh, very thankful for uh, that group of seniors. Because, you know, those guys, you know, that's what was special about that team is, you know, they, they really bought into, um, hey, it's how you finish. That's, that's, that's what we control. It's always about what's next. The, 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 the best is yet to come. The rest of your season is the best of your season. The rest of your life can be the best of your life. You know, let's, let's buy into a different way of thinking and attitude. And those guys did an unbelievable job uh, and, and uh, played their hearts out. You know, we finished four and two. Uh, those last six games, and, and that was certainly uh, the game that kind of got us over the hump, and it, and it got us bowl eligible. You know, we, were, we, were, we weren't going to a bowl, so it gave us an opportunity, and it was huge for me getting the job because it gave us a bowl uh, season to prep 
and to get some things in place for spring practice to get some of those young kids an opportunity to continue to, to kind of sow some seeds and develop our culture a little bit, uh, even though it was a very chaotic situation um, all the way through January. Remember uh, last year, your rest of your press conference about the booster circuit being easier because you're coming off a win against South Carolina. Over your time here, has that sort of magnified itself that even in those years where Clemson win 10, 11 games but lose to South Carolina, how much that meant? Yeah. Oh, it matters. I mean, there's no question. I mean, I, I will say this. Even even when we, when we uh, uh, lost, uh, the Clemson people were great. I mean, they really were. They were always very, uh, uh, you know, happy to see us and, and kind and respectful. I mean, you know, they all in their own ways that you know. They don't, some of them don't really have to say anything. Uh, but, you, you, don't, you know, we all know uh, that it's very disappointing if you don't, if you don't win this game. Because, um, again, you, you're going to live with it uh, regardless of whatever else goes on. But uh, through that, I'm thankful. And, again, those, those were really good teams. You know, these were, these were 10, 11 type win teams, um, very good football teams. And we, we, uh, they earned those games and beat us. But we were also did a lot of great things. And I think, uh, you know, I think our fans are educated. And I think that they recognized uh, where we were heading as a program. You know, it's not like we were, you know, winning five games and, and on that type of thing. Uh, we were uh, not getting it done on that particular day, but as a program, we were moving in the right direction. And uh, so our fans have always been great, but there's no question when you win that game, there's just a little different uh, smile on people's faces uh, when you show up. There's no doubt, especially those people that live down in Columbia. This senior class has a chance to match a couple class records this week. How key has that group been to this team's success? I mean, I mean, this is just an unbelievable group. I mean, it's well documented what they've um, what they've been able to do, and I guess this would be a 45th win. Is that what that, is that right? 46. This would be a 46th win, uh, which I guess ties the record, and, and then they could break it in the postseason play. But I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it really is. I mean, these guys are. You just look at. I mean, they finished. Uh, and Ben Bowler since he came here. I mean, he's he's been a, on at least a top. 10, top five, top 15 team. Uh, we've been in the top five for a long time. Uh, 21, yeah. I mean, in the top five in the country. And so that goes back a long way for, you know, these guys. And so they, they're just, they've been impactful, impactful people in the community, impactful people on this team. I mean, even when they were young players, you know, uh, you, look at, you look at the impact that they've had. I mean, they've, they've just been an incredibly talented and, and committed group, and they're all going to be graduates. Uh, some of them have already graduated. Most of them are all graduating uh, uh, next week. I think, I think all of our scholarship guys graduate next week with the exception of Seth. Uh, he's, he's actually going to work for the Bills in January, and that's going to be his internship. That's all he's got left is his internship in the spring, and then he'll graduate in May. Um, we got a couple of our walk-ons that will graduate this spring as well, but all of our scholarship guys are going to be graduates. Uh, what they've done academically, the academic success that we've had, you know, six out of our last seven years, we've been top ten in the country. Um, you know, last fall in the run that we had, uh, you know, we had 48 guys make a 3.0 or higher. This senior group was obviously a big part of that. But the thing about this group that makes them so special is they're the first group that has the experience coming back into when we started in the spring. No other team I've had, no other senior group had had an, had an experience of a run like they had in 2015 to, to, to draw on. You know, we'd had some great seasons, but a college football playoff, a national championship experience, you know, it, it's, as y'all have heard me say, it's one thing to think about it, dream about it, but when you experience it, it's a whole le different level of teaching. And uh, these guys kind of bottled that up. And, and the, our spring practice from day one of our meetings in here, uh, the leadership, the accountability, uh, this has been an easy football team. I mean, easy football team to coach. Uh, just no drama. Uh, Guys just uh, incredibly coachable. And then how they've managed. Because we're a lot of people think we're this, this old team. We're, we're incredibly young. I mean, our football team is 
way, way, way majority freshmen and sophomores. Uh, so, you know, we don't have many juniors on scholarship. We don't have many seniors. I mean, we got 13 scholarship seniors, and that counts Teasdall, who came here as a walk-on. That counts Seth Ryan, who came here as a walk-on. Uh, you know, just don't have many. And uh, but they are impactful people, great leaders, and have been incredibly committed to being the best they can be on and off the field as players, academics, uh, leaders, you name it. Having grown up in one of these contentious rivalries, does this week feel any different to you? Uh, from when I was at Alabama? Just, yeah, just in, in having no, just no, no, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's really no different at all, to be honest with you. Um, it's zero difference. The, the only difference is we're not in the same conference, same division. Uh, that's that's the really only difference. But as far as the the rivalry, the emotion in the state, uh, the impact that that has, the interest, the scrutiny, it's it's all the same. Uh, it really is. There's there's no difference. You know, again, you, we're, our states are similar. You know, you don't have pro sports. You know, high school football, college football, two main. Uh, universities uh, in the state that uh, people are passionate about uh, and you got to choose you know even if you just move in here from somewhere and you know you got to choose you know even if you're a fan of Wisconsin yeah, well that's great but who you pulling for uh, I need to know because it's going to determine whether or not you and I are going to talk this week uh, or ever again so you know it's uh, it's the same it really is the it, it is it is truly the same over your time here as an assistant coach, now a head coach, with the rivalry, what's the most lighthearted or, or, or uh, humorous moment you can recall a fan or a student coming up to you and saying something to you about it? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, I've had a bunch of them. You know, I get all kind of crazy stuff sent to me um, or written to me or, or whatever. Um, I've, had, I've had a lot of humor on both sides uh, along, the, along the years. I don't know what the most – Humorous would be. Did you guys follow Jake in the recruiting process at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bentley. Oh, yeah. Watched him since he was in, like, the eighth grade. Uh, he's a really good football player. And we actually he had him in, had him in camp. Uh, he came up here, and uh, uh, he's uh, he did a tremendous job in our camp. Got a live arm, big, strong, and, uh, you know, just just uh, got a lot, of, a lot of respect for him as a player. Recruiting, um, how important is this game for recruiting in state, or has your elite status kind of transcended the importance of that in terms of recruiting? Elite status, uh, wow. Uh, no, I don't think it, it, it really doesn't. I don't. I don't think that matters. I mean, I think that um, this state again is, is so similar to um, what I grew up in. And coached in for I was a part of coaching and playing for 13 years, and this is my 14th year here. So, um, what I've learned over the years is exactly what I knew when I was at Alabama. Uh, some places you walk in, and I don't care, you might have won the national championship. Uh, they ain't happy to see you. Uh, some places you walk in, and you won five games. They're happy to see you. You know, I mean, it's just that's just the way it is uh, because of the state and the culture that we have here. Um, some of these kids that you're going to love in the recruiting process and you evaluate and you really like them, you know what? They grew up South Carolina. That's just hard to overcome. Or they grew up Clemson, and it's just hard to overcome. Um, you know, unless you just got bad people involved. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to the people that are in place. And they got a bunch of good folks over there. Will's got a good staff. Uh, so, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really think it matters as much as people think. I think that uh, kids – um, if they're going to stay in state, you know, I think now that's the, the bigger challenge for us and South Carolina. Uh, we, we really don't – everybody thinks that we do. Every now and then you'll have a guy here or there, but we really don't compete with South Carolina as much in state as you would think. Uh, and it, the, the reason is we're just so different. I mean, they're just they're – just, you couldn't have more differences in, in, in the – the programs, the locations, the environments, you name it, uh, you know, conferences, whatever. And so usually if a kid just loves South Carolina, well, he's probably not going to like Clemson as much. Or if he just loves – we're, we're very, very different in that regard. Um, 
from a from a recruiting outside stand. But in state, most of them on rare occasions uh, will you just turn a guy. You know, um, the more recruiting that we do against each other will come out of state. You know, kids that want to come in and are interested in looking at both programs um, in this state, but uh, from out of state. But in state, it's not as much as you would think. First of all, we don't, there's not, we, we have a very small population, as we all know. And then you throw in the academics. Now the pool shrinks even more. I mean, there's more people in Atlanta than our whole state, you know. So, um, and then you throw in the, the, okay, well, he's been a South Carolina kid his whole life, or he's been a Clemson kid his whole life. But sometimes there's a kid that's a Clemson guy that maybe we don't offer, that, that he has the opportunity to stay at home and, and, and go to South Carolina. Or it's a, there's a kid that's a South Carolina fan that grew up South Carolina, but maybe they didn't offer, that we really like. Uh, and we have both of those on our team. We have that situation. They have that situation. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's it's great to see the, the the kids of our state have an opportunity to stay at home, and uh, and and play at, at, at two good, really good programs in front of their families and their friends. Uh, so I think that's a positive. But as far as just you know, winning the game and that just makes somebody's decision or having a good year or bad year, I don't I don't really think that's as big a deal as a lot of people may think. Back to some of the funny stuff, rivalry we can bring up. Pranksters has a Gamecock fan that's maybe like a neighbor or someone that you're closer to, or maybe even Coach Spurrier ever pranked you during the week, or maybe even in the off season, or have you ever pulled off something funny against a Gamecock fan? Uh, not that I can share, uh, <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, there's plenty of that going around, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, Coach Spurrier's never pranked during this week. Uh, no, he's never done that. I don't. I don't. I don't really. Ha I don't have anything new uh, on him today. Is he, has he been back with the team? Or well, he, yeah, he's he's engaged in what we're asking him to do and, and what he needs to do. And he, he actually came to practice last week, and uh, it was great to see him there. So you know, hopefully he'll he'll we'll see him at some point this week. But this is a little different week um, as far as you know his school time and opportunity to be with his family. Is he practicing? No, he just was at practice. On Saturday night, that Jalen Williams might have retweaked his hamstring. Is, is he okay? Jalen, no, it was his knee. Okay. You know, he's they just he, he, his. I think it was some something a little bit to do with the weather too. I think, but uh, he's back in practice, and they were trying to change out his brace and all that stuff. But we ended up just pulling him out uh, in the game the other night. That positive kind of a, the end of don't break defense and cause a lot of turnovers in the red zone. Do you feel like having success in the red zone will kind of be a big? Well, that's been the key to us, our success. That's for sure. You know, when we've done a great job in the red zone, we've 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 played well. It all goes back to turnovers for us this this season. Uh, there's no question. Last year it was big plays. Uh, this year it's it's turnovers. And when we've done a good job, you know, one or less, I mean, it's it's unbelievable what we've been able to do. And um, when we've had two or more. You know, it's 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 the dynamics are different. Uh, so we've got to take care of the ball, but in particular in the red zone, uh, because not only have we had turnovers, but we've had a bunch in the red zone. Uh, and so now you're not getting points, and you've you've shortened the game. I mean, it's a it's it's a double-edged sword there. But um, uh, they they've done. I mean, Florida they got a, had a big turnover off, off in the red zone. Florida did. Uh, South Carolina recovered. Uh, I think. Uh, I believe it was uh, who was it early on? It might have been Mississippi State, I think. Had a couple turnovers inside the twenty, as well. So they've done a nice job uh, of getting turnovers. And again, they're very well coached defensively, and they play hard, play tough, uh, run to the ball, and you know, get after you. Speaking of what this uh, environment did to Louisville and Lamar Jackson, the primetime environment. How much of an advantage do you think you guys had playing this at home, prime time? With Jay Bentley, who's really the age of a high school senior coming. Uh, he's he's a he's a mature kid. He's been around this state. Uh, he's been to Clemson many times. He's he's not going to be overwhelmed by that. He understands what he's getting into. Uh, you know, Lamar Jackson uh, had not been here, but shoot, I mean, he, he had I thought the best performance of his year. Uh, I don't know how much you know we 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 turned it over five times, and he had a hundred plays. Um, yeah, but uh, we made one more play than they did. But he, uh, I thought he had a great game when he was here. Coach, 
What have you seen on film from South Carolina that makes them so special, forcing teams to turn over the ball and make mistakes? They seem to be able to do that to everyone who's played so far this year. Yeah, just what we were saying. I mean, just schematically, what they do coverage-wise, uh, they get after you. First of all, they play hard up front. Uh, they're very well coached. They position their guys very well. They understand what the offenses are trying to do. Uh, so, you know, they'll scheme up your protections. They'll, they do a great job of, of route reading. And, and uh, if you've got tendencies, they're going to know them. Um, and uh, they position them well. And they mix their coverages. You know, again, they're not a, just a one-trick pony. You know, they're, they're going to they're gonna change it up as far as technique of the corners, depths of the corners. Uh, you know, whether if they're going to be a one-safety team, well, there's different ways to be a one-safety team and how you get to it. Uh, so they had a, they had their backers uh, do a good job. Uh, you know, they had a big uh, big pick in the red zone against one of the teams. I get them all mixed up in my head watching the tape, but uh, they they understand, you know, what they're doing. And uh, again, very well coached. Can it force players to overthink maybe a little bit? Like, be careful because these guys know how to force a turnover. No, I just think. I mean, that's what we have to do too. We got to we've got to be well coached and we got to be well prepared and. And we've got to understand what they're trying to do and, uh, you know, study them, break them down. And at the end of the day, you know, we have answers built into what we're trying to do. So we have to, we have to execute well. We've got to execute at a high level and you've you got to win your matchups um, so that you can play in rhythm and not have to, you know, scramble around and, and be, a, be scattered, uh, you know, and get yourself, if you get behind the chains and things like that, uh, you're playing on a, on a long a long field, uh, that's that's a big advantage for them. Tony Elliott said yesterday that Ben Bolwer is a guy who will make sure that everybody knows how much this rivalry game means. Is that something that stands out, how much he cares about this game? Yeah, I think we got several guys. Uh, they all know, uh, especially these seniors. Uh, they, they've been around here, and um, they all understand. Uh, we've got a bunch of kids on this team, you know, Ben, Jadar, Cordray. Uh, Mike Williams, a lot of these guys, uh, they they understand uh, how important this game is. They really all do, even even if they're not from this state, because um, they live it. Even if you win it, you live that too, uh, and that's a lot better option. Uh, I, I can assure you. Tony Elliott mentioned the other day too that uh, that weight game maybe gave the run game a jumping off point that you can move forward with. Do you think that that's something that you want to see more of, with the way you dominated the run game like that this week? Yeah, I mean, we we, we want to run the ball every week. Uh, you know, uh, against Pitt, it just it wasn't an option. You know, uh, that's why we threw for 580. Uh, I know everybody wants to think we're just going to line up and run against, you know, nine man fronts. Uh, we haven't seen anybody play us like Pitt played us, but at 630 yards, 580 yards passing, 70 percent completion. It was all built into the run game. Okay, we're going to take what you give us, and we're going to, and we're very effective. We had a couple of turnovers, and we didn't play well on defense, um, and we got beat. But um, you know, yeah, we wanted to run the ball a lot more, but we kind of we're not going to beat our head against the wall. The style of play this week totally different, completely different. They were going to try to run the ball on offense and shorten the game and play very soft on defense, and uh, not give up big plays and force you to see if you could put drives together. So you still got to be able to do it. You still got to be able to win those matchups. And that's what I was so encouraged about last week uh, was we did a great job on our double teams, did a much better job of getting our back to the second level. Uh, I thought Wayne did a great job of winning his matchups because when we do get you to that second level and there's, you know, they're reacting and spinning people down, you still got to beat a guy. And uh, he did a great job of winning his one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, I thought Deshaun did a great job from a decision-making standpoint in the run game. And, uh, and we just covered him up. And we did an excellent job on the perimeter. You know, guys like Mike Williams, uh, he did an outstanding job blocking on the perimeter. Leggett did a good job out on the perimeter. Um, but it all, and it all goes together. Uh, but we were, and we were very patient. But, but we, were, we had to be uh, based on the style of play that uh, you know we're being presented with and that's that's always what we're going to do you know we're, we're not you know we're not trying to force a square peg in a round hole we always want to run the football but uh, uh, you know we've got to be able to to go do that and uh, you know every week that's where it starts uh, but then we have to respond to what's happening in the game and uh, you know that's what makes us so dangerous 
is we can run the ball and we can throw the ball. Uh, we're not just a one-dimensional team. And uh, you know, we've proven that many, many times. Uh, so I don't think that's going to change as we move forward. Uh, our ability to do both um, is, is critical to our overall success and our long-term goals. Coach, while you have this relationship with Coach Muschamp, first time you're facing off as head coaches, what would it be like to see him on the other sideline? And what's the potential for you two moving forward through the years in this rivalry? Uh, it won't be any different than any other game, you know. I mean, it, you always see the head coach, and, and um, it's, 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 I guess, a little different in that this is our first uh, matchup, uh, his first get time to be a part of this game. But, uh, you know, again, uh, Will and I both understand we got a job to do, have a healthy respect for one another. And uh, he's worried about his team. I'm worried about my team. Uh, we'll visit and chit-chat like we do with all head coaches. Uh, Occasionally, every now and then, you'll have one that won't come talk to you, but but uh, I think I think he will. Um, so we'll visit a little bit, and then we'll move on to the game. Um, that's really, truly really it. Anybody got anything else? Thank you. Coach. All right, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>